Disney presents The wondering what I'm doing with a cannon in my office. Well, I've had everything in here from a horse to a bear cup. And in each case, they all had something to do with our show. And this cannon definitely has something to do with the program we're about to bring you. It's the first episode of our story about an ex-Marine named Kilroy, and who, when he's discharged from the service, decides to visit the hometown of his best friend in the Marines. Well. Kilroy arrived just in time to walk into another war. This one was called the War at Wilton Junction, and it involved a bunch of boys, this cannon, City Hall, and all the neighbors. Now, how can an ex-Marine stay out of a fight like that? So, let's get to Wilton Junction for part one of our story of Kilroy and see how it all began, and incidentally, who won the war. <laughs> Hey, Admiral, sir. Yes, Captain. Hey, I'm in a store, sir. Port Bell. Get out of my way, will you? Let go of my neck. Wow. Taking on cargo. She's a sitting duck. Battle station. Aruba. Aruba. Ring, Sergeant. 4,000 yards. Bearing. Corner of 5th and Main. Ready. Aye, aye, sir. Aim. Aye, aye, sir. Remember to launch. Yes, sir. Then fire. <laughs> Direct hit, sir. Lord, clean out of the water. Well done, Captain. Sanction! Have a decoration. Nice work, Captain. Take the rest of the day off. At ease, men! Admiral! Admiral! I see an enemy cruiser! Ah, uh, you just want a butt. No kidding, Billy. Look! Watch your language, soldier. Admiral, I mean. No kidding. <laughs> That's one of ours, you dope. I don't want to play this anymore. They go on home. Hey, Admiral, get her, I mean. What? Enemy tank approaching. <laughs> Battle stations, watch out for dismounters. Oh, oh, oh. Range, Sergeant, 2,000 yards. Ready, ready, aim, aim. Well, take it easy. <laughs> Wilton Junction. That's right. First time you've been here? Say, you must be Hap Haygood. Right again. How did you know? Do you know Greg Fuller? He's from this town. Greg, of course I know him. Gave Greg his last haircut before he went in the Marines. Well, Greg's a buddy of mine. He said to say hi. Oh, where is Greg now? Uh, Vietnam. And how is he? Oh, he's fine. <laughs> fine. How can anybody be fine in Vietnam? But he's okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Could you tell me where Greg lives? I, I mean the family. I've got oh, the answer. Oh, sure. You. Straight ahead, eight blocks. Uh -huh. Then you turn right. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know the number exactly. Well, fine. But, well, I've uh, got it here. Uh, thanks. Well, I'll see you later. Uh, say, what'd you say your name was? Uh, I'll see you later. Hey, hey, that's the wrong way. Uh, uh, I know. I just want to take a look around first. <laughs> Morning. Something new for you? Oh, no, thanks. Man, we're selling something. Oh, no, no, not at all. Uh, you must be Mr. Polk. Well, what if I am? Yeah, you're Mr. Polk, all right. Is there something funny about that? <laughs> oh, yeah, kind of. How's your daughter Mary? Has she ever have a baby? 
Of course she had him. He'd a fine way if she didn't. That was two years ago. <laughs> what if she did? She named him Buford? How did you know my name was Buford? <laughs> remember Greg Fuller? He worked here one summer. He hung around here one summer. I don't remember getting any work out of him. <laughs> now I know what Greg meant. Well, at that, I guess he was as good as any of them. Well, anyway, uh, Greg said to say hi. Oh, he did, did he? And say hi to Mrs. Polk, too. Well, who shall I tell her? Uh, just say hi. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Sorry, Fred. Now, who in heck is that? Hey, Gerald, Gerald! That idiot with Pro moving in closer! I get lost. Hey, the kid's white. Do I get a decoration? All right, men, battle station. Hold your fire. Wait till you see the whites of their eyes. Ready, ready. Okay, okay. Go see. Not me, boy. You're the general. You can be it now. Not me. You. It's an old trick I learned in the service. No kidding? Yeah. Got caught in a crossfire once in the middle of a swamp. Had to play dead for about two hours. Had to hold my nose and breathe through a reed. Golly, how'd you get out of it? I sneezed. Underwater? <laughs> yes. I spouted like a whale. I looked like some kind of a sea serpent. They ran like crooks. How oh, you didn't. What were you, in the Army? The Army? The Marines. Yeah? Hey, fellas, did hey, you hear that? Hey, 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 My brother's a Marine. Hey, you must be Billy Fuller. How'd you know? Well, I ought to. Greg's told me enough about you. You're Oscar. You must be. Fellas, this is Oscar. Hi, hi, hi Oscar. Oscar. Hi, hi, Oscar. Hi. Hey, it's a pretty sharp outfit you got here. Thank you. Oh, hey, thanks. Sorry. You don't mind me calling you Oscar. I forgot your last name. Call me Oscar. That's bad enough. Gee, the folks will be surprised. They've been expecting you, only Greg didn't say when. How long are you gonna stay? When'd you get here? All Greg ever writes about is the mosquitoes. What's it like in the Marines, Oscar? He never tells about the fighting. I got a bike with six speeds, and we'll see it. <laughs> I want to see everything. Come on, I'll show you the way. Gee, what's it like in the Marines? It's great meeting you at last, Oscar. Greg's really doing fine. Did you fine. have a good trip? He, he looked so thin in that last photo. Oh, he's doing great, Mrs. Fuller, really. Oh, it's so nice to have you here. Really, it's almost like having Greg home. Uh, Mom, you're embarrassing. Oh, I guess he can take it. Uh, it's just like I pictured it. Uh, it's a funny feeling. Now, uh, where's Greg's sister? Oh, Gladys is away visiting her college roommate. She won't be back till after the 4th. I wish it was till after Christmas. Ballet. Show Oscar upstairs. I'm sure he'd like to wash up. What for, Mom? He's clean enough. Oh, Billy. He just got here. He hasn't had time to get dirty. William? We're uh, putting you in Greg's room. Billy will show you. Uh, now, wait a minute, Mrs. Fuller. I, I, I didn't expect you to put me up. Listen, any friend of Greg's is more than of welcome. Of course, especially you. Of course you're going to stay with us. Room's just sitting up there empty. Well, that's very nice of you, but... We wouldn't have it any other way. Now, Billy, show Oscar up to Greg's room. Okay, Mom. Well, here, yeah, I'll get that. I can carry it. Oh, Billy, while you're up there, you might do a little washing yourself. Oh, Dad. Yeah, I know you don't need it, just uh, for practice. I'm sure they wash in the Marines. Uh, noted for it. Get a pass inspection. Come on, pal, we'll go and scrub up. <laughs> well, I was born in Brooklyn. Well, that's in the east. That's where the bridge is. Yeah, that's where the bridge is and a few other things, too. Does your family still live there? No, oh, I don't have any family. How can you not have a family? Billy, I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. I was so young, I don't even remember. Where'd you live then? 
Billy, why don't you just eat? Oh, different places. After I got out of the uh, place there, I... Well, they uh, boarded me around until I went to work. You know something? It's, it's funny, maybe, but... I never felt any place was home until... until Greg started telling me about Wilton Junction. Boy, he was really selling it. You must have been homesick, I guess. Homesick? Well, you had me homesick for a place I've never been to. <laughs> no kidding. After I got out of the service, the first thing I wanted to do was come here and take a look. Greg ought to go into real estate. <laughs> You're not kidding. You see, it got uh, pretty dull out there sometimes and kind of lonely. Uh, Greg and I used to sit around and he'd tell me everything that goes on here. He'd tell me all about the town characters and all. It got so that I practically knew everyone. <laughs> He even read me his letters, the one that you sent him, because I didn't get any. Even the newspaper that you sent him every week. The Enterprise. <laughs> I knew that by heart. Even the want ads. Because <laughs> I guess I was some kind of a, a sucker for that sort of thing. I, I always wanted to live in a small town. Well, you certainly are welcome here. Sure, make yourself at home. Thanks. Say, we ought to be getting back to the store. If you'll excuse us. Of course. Uh, Mrs. Fuller's helping me this week. We're taking inventory. And we're just about three months late. <laughs> we keep putting it off and putting it off. Never open a hardware store. Yeah, I wasn't planning on it. Oh, more darn stuff. Uh, Billy, show Oscar the town, right? Okay, Dad. Oh, and in honor of Oscar, you don't have to do the dishes. Gee, great. <laughs> Come on, Oscar. I'll show you around. See anything. Hey, look at this. A chestnut. Oh, there's millions of them. All over town. Yeah, it's a pretty one, just like mahogany. Hey, don't eat it. That's a horse chestnut. Oh, you gotta be a horse. No. Save it. You can make a pipe out of it. Hey, look. What's he doing? Well, who is he? Old man Turner that owns a junkyard. He's a big chip. Let's go see. Is it any of your business? He's wrecking our cannon. Hey, mister, the boy asked you a question. The least you can do is answer him. I don't know where you come from, but why don't you go back there? I like it here. He likes it here. The town's junk in the cannon. Does that answer your question? They can't do that. Can they? Well, Billy, I don't know. Huh? It looks like he's doing it. Well, I'm going to find out. Come on. <laughs> Stay tuned. Walt Disney Presents will be right back. Good afternoon. Afternoon. What can I do for you? Uh, we'd like to ask you a question. There's a man outside hitting the cannon with a sledgehammer. Is that okay? Seth Turner, I guess. Getting ready to move it. But we always play on the cannon. What's he gonna move it for? Well, you see, the city council decided to get rid of it. Get rid of it? Gonna put up a nice new fountain there. What good's that? You can't shoot a fountain. Well, you got a point. Only thing is, folks began to think it was kind of an eyesore. You're uh, Sam Fuller's boy, aren't you? Yes, sir. Billy Fuller. Well, you see, Billy, the council's already made up its mind, I'm afraid. Tell you the truth, I kind of hate to see the cannon go myself, but... How soon are they gonna move it? Well, not before noon tomorrow. That's when the bidding closes. They're bidding on it? Yeah, they're auctioning it off, called for sealed bids. Junkyard's the only one that bid on it, so Seth figures he's going to get it, I guess. He's kind of uh, jumping a gun, isn't he? Well, you might say that. Still public property, though. So why don't you run along and play on it while you can? Gosh, do they have to? There's no chance the council might be persuaded to change its mind, is there? Not if you know the council. It takes them so long to make it up, it'd take them forever to change it. <laughs> Sorry, son. That's the way it is. Thanks. Well, that's the way it goes, all right. Some guys are off fighting and others are 
homemaking deals. <laughs> that cannon probably cost the government a... Uh, ah, uh, who knows. You can haul it away for peanuts. What's a sealed bid anyway? Well, you write down how much you're willing to pay for something, and then you seal it in an envelope. And then everybody else who wants it does the same. And then they open the envelope, and the highest bid gets it. Billy! Hey, Billy! You know what old man Johnny's doing to the cannon? He's unchaining it! He won't let us plant it. He chased us off. He can't do that, can he, Oscar? Well, it's still public property. Listen to me, you guys. How much money you got? Seven cents. Why? Freckles, how much you got? Fifteen, but my brother owes me a quarter. Porky, you always got some. A nickel, maybe. Why? Come on, you've got more than that. I've got a lifesaver. Keep it. Come on, you guys, cough up. Anybody that wants to play in the cannon. Wait a minute, what for? We're gonna make a bid for the cannon. You mean buy it? Hey, our own cannon. Come on now, you guys, no hold now. Billy, hold on. You're not figuring on taking... He said he'd be getting it for peanuts. I know, but We've you... We've got a dollar and two cents. And if Freckles' brother pays him, that'll be the day. Well, I'll cover for Freckles' brother, but... Hey, a dollar twenty-seven. Yay! Wait a second, wait a second. Billy, do you have any idea how much a can it costs? No, how much? Well, it's more than a dollar twenty-seven. We can try, can't we? Well, sure, you can always try, but... Well, don't get your hopes up. What do you say, fellas? What can we lose? That's the stuff. The money gets refunded if we don't get the cannon, doesn't it? Come on, men, let's go. Doesn't it? Follow me. Doesn't it, Billy? Hey, doesn't it? Come on. Hey, Billy, look at me. Get off. Where you? Where you been all morning? I didn't feel like coming over. Why not? It makes me sick, that's why. What's the matter? Your dad say you couldn't? Couldn't what? Buy the cannon. I didn't even tell him about it. What's the use? Oscar's right. We're never gonna get it. Old man Turner's got all the money in the world. Well, we might as well play it while we can. It's almost 12 o'clock now. Oscar said he'd meet us here. Said if we didn't get the cannon, he'd buy us all a soda. Oh, boy! I'd rather have a soda. You would? No. I guess I'd rather have the cannon. You know, it's a lot better since he cut it loose. You can aim it better. Hey, General, General! Enemy junk wagon approaching! Enemy junk wagon! Pete's right. It's old man Turner. Coming for the cannon, I betcha. He should get arrested. Driving on the grass. He should get arrested anyway. Let's let him have it. Yeah. Might as well go down fighting. Battle stations! Ahoga! Ahoga! Come on, grab it! to keep off this. We're not hurting it. Besides, it's not yours. Not yet, anyway. Hey, mister. Yeah? You're dead. Don't you give me any of your lip. Billy, I want to talk to you. Oh, it's you again. Now, just, just a moment. The boys are right. This is still town property, and they got a right to the use of it. Well, in five more minutes, it won't be. We'll see about that right now. All right, we will. Come on, fellas. Now, Billy, wait a second. Why don't you just forget about it? Now, come on, I'll buy everybody a soda. No. Come on, fellas. Well, you heard the general. Let's go. And that's that. I'll give you $10 for it. 
Bidding is closed. I'll make it 25. That's my limit. It's a fair price. If he had given a fair price in the first place, this wouldn't have happened. Bidding is closed. Come in again and see us sometime, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> well, Billy, you got yourself a cannon. Gee, thanks. Now, what are you going to do with it? I don't know. I never figured I'd get it. Can I leave it where it is? Well, uh, I'm afraid not. Tell you what. I'll get in touch with Seth Turner and get you the $25, and you can get down and put it in the bank. Can I keep the cannon? Well, of course you can. Only thing, there's a rule. All purchased town property has to be removed from the premises within 24 hours. That's tomorrow. Now, you let me get in touch with Seth. Wait a minute. What do you think, Oscar? Well, I don't know, Billy. If you're figuring I'm keeping a cannon, I think you'd better talk to your father. I'll be back! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give this to you. Two dozen hasps, four inch. Two dozen, four inch. Hey, Dad! Uh, Billy, don't bother what your is father. It, Billy? He's pounding. I just bought a cannon for $1.27. Can I keep it? Yes, yes. Don't ask me any questions. Gee, thanks, Dad. 30. 30, 30 of the three inch. Dad says it's okay. He says I can keep it. Dad, 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 Dad. Hey, it's a pretty good day you got there, Billy. How are we going to get it home? Yeah, we never thought of that. Well, where there's a will, there's a way. Now, let's see. Uh, Billy, do you have any rope? I know where there is some, Oscar. Well, go get it. We're going to need some way to keep this tail from dragging. Ready? Go. Oh, there's so much harder on the Truck approaching at 8 o'clock. Fall out, man. Follow me. Oh, oh boy. Well, you're oh, the nice cream. I can use some ice cream now. Hi. Hi. Uh, say, do you think you can give us a tow? You want me to tow that? <laughs> if you don't mind. I'm sorry, mister. I'm in the ice cream business. Now, wait. I'm not in the cannon business, but these loyal customers of yours have a problem. I'm sorry. Now, wait a second. Maybe we can make a deal. If you give us a tow, I'll buy ice cream bars for all hands. Now, what do you say? You want me to get arrested? There's absolutely no chance. What did I tell you? All right, what's going on here? Talk to him. Well, it's, it's all right, officer. Everything's on the up and up. Uh, uh, this cannon is this boy's uh, personal uh, cannon. Uh, and who are you? Well, I'm, I'm just a, a friend of his. What's your name? Well, I'm just uh, helping him uh, get it home. No, I asked you your name. You do have a name, don't you? All right, it's uh, Kilroy. You being a wise guy? No, no, you asked me my name, and I told you it's Kilroy. Now, go ahead and laugh. <laughs> Okay, Kilroy, where you been? Now, come on, is your name really Kilroy? Yeah. Hey, here's my ID. By gosh, it is. U.S. Marines, huh? Hey, you're not that guy that went around drawing... No, no, no. I wish people would stop asking me that. That was some other Don Kilroy. Well, anybody with the name of Kilroy is okay with me. <laughs> well, hi. Now, uh, what about this cannon? Well, the boy has a bill of sale if you want to see it. He bought it from the town. Well, I'll take your word for it. But I, uh... I still feel I should run you in, but I don't know what for. You can't exactly call it a concealed weapon now, can you? <laughs> no, it's, it's more or less uh, an antique. Hey, you got the answer. There's no law against hauling antiques. Where are you taking it? We're taking it to my house. Does your dad know about this? I asked him. He said it was okay. Well, Sonny, you must have some dad. Okay, follow me. Hey, 
Hey, Billy, hey, Billy, are you sure your dad said it was all right to have the cannon here? Well, ask him, Oscar. Why? Well, there are a lot of people who don't like to have a cannon looking at... Hey, it's moving! Hey, come on! anybody who can get the best of Seth Turner in a business deal, but unfortunately... You've got to give Oscar credit, too. Without him, you never would have got the cannon. You never would have got it home, either. Did this fellow say how long he's staying? Well, darling, he just got here. But I didn't expect him to bring his artillery with him. Billy, now listen. Uh, I can understand your wanting the cannon, and I admire your enterprise, but unfortunately, you... Well, you just can't keep it. Dad, why not? Because people don't have cannons in their front yard, that's why. Well, the Coogans have a wheelbarrow in the middle of theirs. Well, that's different. It's whitewashed and it's got petunias in it. If we plant petunias? No. Well, what about the Whitmores? They've got an iron stag in their front lawn, and that's the fanciest place in town. I don't want to argue about it. Well, cannon's more use than a dumb old stag, for Pete's sake. I said I don't want to argue about it. You're doing it. Upstairs. Sam. Okay. Well, be reasonable. I have a hard day. I come home, what do I find in front of our house? A cannon. Will you be a little reasonable? A cannon. I'll leave it to anybody. I'll leave it to the United Nations. What's Coogan doing on our front lawn? Answer that and I'll find out. And calm down. I am calm. Hello. Oh, hello, Fred. What do you mean, is it Veterans Day? Of course I know there's a cannon. I don't need you to tell me. I, I can take a joke as well as anybody, but I've got to hear one first. Darn fool, hasn't he anything better to do? Dear, I think you better speak to Mr. Coogan. What for? He's a little upset. So am I, but I don't go rushing over to his place to tell him about it. Meaning of what? You've got that cannon pointed right straight at my bedroom window. That's right, Coogan. Stick them up. Why? Listen, you've got a wheelbarrow pointed at my front porch, and you don't hear me complaining. Oh, fuck. You'll be hearing about this! Hello. Speaking. What's going on? Yes, Whitmore, what is it? Try not to annoy him. It's the inventory. It always gets on his nerves. Now, hold on. If you want to talk about eyesores, did you ask my permission to stick that idiotic iron cow in your front yard? Well, what do you think that's doing to property values? We could put the cannon on him back, Dad. I don't care if it's a buffalo. It's as much my business as the cannon is yours. It's there because I like it there, and it's going to stay there. Dad! Not telling me, darn it. Gee, Dad, you're the greatest, you know it? Yeah, uh, that's uh, not what your mother says. I do, too. I just won't say the greatest. What? Oh, well, it's nothing we can do about over the weekend anyway, so enjoy it while you've got it, huh? Stay tuned. Walt Disney Presents will be right...
Looks like they're setting up a kamikaze. Looks like it. He's ready. Okay, you guys. Everybody ready? 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 A suicide mission accomplished. This maneuver goes to the enemy. Uh, it was a darn good maneuver. Okay, you guys, let's really get them this time. Looks like they're getting ready for the big one, fellas. Watch yourselves. Everybody ready to attack and open fire? to decide. Take your time. Fuller, you got a minute? No, I've got a customer. Well, what do you think? The red one's nice. But then again, so's the green. Wait on this third one before I make up my mind. Of course. What can I do for you, Coogan? You can read this. What is it? It's a petition, that's what it is. Signed by every property owner in the neighborhood. Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't signed by me. Every respectable property owner. You want me to read it to you? No. Whereas, Sam Fuller, with malice aforethought, in defiance of the public interest and to the detriment of property values, did place or cause to be placed a public nuisance to whip a cannon in front of his house. Now, therefore, we the undersigned... You the undersigned can go to blazes. Excuse me, madam. We'll go to the law. That's where we'll go. Reverend Hamilton, it's an outrage. Now, that's what it is, an outrage. In a peaceful neighborhood like ours, to have a thing like, like that. Militaristic symbol. That's right. Glorifying war. That's right. And seducing our sons. Oh, Abigail, come. What about this cannon, Sam? Uh, there must be two sides to this. There's only one side to it, and I'm on it. No, darling. <laughs> you know the cannon. It sat there on the green for years. It's never been an issue before. Now, all of a sudden, it's a militaristic symbol. Well, I say it's a re reminder of the need for preparedness. And furthermore, I say it's the constitutional right of every citizen to defend his home and family. Sam, don't let yourself get upset on the Sabbath. And furthermore than that, Nobody's telling me what I can plant in my own front yard. Well, but, have uh, a good day, Reverend. <laughs> Sam! Gee, Dad, I'm really proud of you. You know it? You really told him. Oh, shut up. I wish you'd never heard of this darn cannon. We're going to have to get rid of it. Get rid of it? Why? Because they're right and I'm wrong. That's why. But I don't want them telling me so. I don't get it. A minute ago, he was telling everybody that we Billy, were... Billy, there, you'll just have to learn. That's just the way men are. Billy, don't take it too hard. Now, you'll get over it. You know, you can even get tired of a cannon. <laughs> you know, I saw an ad in, in a magazine once. It said, Boys, win this Shetland pony. I thought I'd die if I didn't win that pony. I thought I'd just die, but I didn't. I didn't win the pony, I didn't die. Now, if anybody was to offer me that same pony, I would say, nah. I guess I'm not convincing you. But at least you had the cannon. You know, you could say to other guys, you know something? I used to have a cannon. Yeah, just like it was nothing. 
Then if they ask you to, to prove it, you, you could... <laughs> hey, why don't you take a picture with a cannon? Yeah. Hi, Billy. Oh, hi, Mr. Johnson. How are you, son? Hi. Is your dad home? Yeah. I'll tell him you're here. Dad! Hey, Dad! Dad, Mr. Kosinski and Mr. Johnson are outside. What now? Well, hear what they have to say, Sam. If anybody else comes butting in here about that cannon, I'll punch him in the nose. Afternoon, Sam. Mrs. Phillips. Hello there. Nice day. You came here Bye. to tell me that? Sam, we have a petition here. Do you now? Almost everybody signed it, Sam. Here, read it. I don't have to read it. Oh, yes, you do, Sam. We, the undersigned, who hereby state that if Sam Fuller wants a cannon on his front lawn, it's all right with us, because Sam Fuller's a good neighbor. Oh, yes! Yeah. Darn it. Why'd they have to come messing around? I had it settled. I had my mind all made up. Does that mean we get no, to keep No, it the... does not. Half these people signed the other petition. Oh, Doc, you know nobody ever reads things. Well, they're not going to tell me what to do. I'm calling the junkyard in the morning. Sam. Hello, is this the junkyard? Oh, this is Sam Fuller. Seth, it seems my son's acquired a cannon. I guess you know about it. Well, it's obstructing my front yard, so you can have it if you want it. Well, of course you'd have to come and get it. You don't expect me to. What would you charge? $25 to haul it. Forget it. I'll keep the blame thing. <coughs> Robber. Hey, Dad. Morning, Sam. Go ahead. Mr. Barrett just took a picture of us with the camera. He's going to put it in the Enterprise. Oh? I, uh, I'm working up a story to go with it. Mind if I ask you a question? Fire away. I uh, hear your neighbor across the street is uh, taking legal action, charging you with maintaining a public nuisance. What action are you going to take? You tell Coogan for me that I'm thinking of buying a second cannon so I can have a matched pair. <laughs> OK, I'll tell him that, Sam. Did they really put you in jail, Dad? Uh, let them try. If you're not doing anything, grab hold of that broom. I got it. Gee, I wouldn't want him going to jail. <laughs> there are worse places in jail, Billy. I've been in jail. You have? Well, in a guardhouse, the same thing. What for? Well, they called it insubordination. I didn't quite see it that way. Just expressed an opinion, that's all. When you got out of jail, I mean, did people speak to you? Listen, some of the great men in this world have gone to jail because they believed in something and wouldn't take it back. Now, you've got to admire a man who is stubborn enough to go to jail for something like that. Dad's stubborn, all right. Mom says he's the stubbornest man in the world. any way I could get rid of the cannon? Well, uh, why do you want to get rid of it? I don't like it anymore. I'm tired of it. Well, I suppose we could call Seth Turner down to the junkyard. Dad already called him. He wouldn't come for it. Why not? I don't know. Maybe because Dad called him a robber. <laughs> Persuasion wouldn't work, huh? Tell you what. I'll call the sanitation department. Don't know as it exactly comes under the head of rubbish, but they may tow it as far as the junkyard. Thanks, Mr. Conway. Look at her, the old crow, peeking through the curtain. Yeah, short one in her beard, I bet. Hey, hold on. Hey, where's going with that? Hey, what's the idea? Came for it. Well, he can't do that. Hey! 
Let it go, Oscar. It's okay. Well, what do you mean it's okay? I just don't care about it anymore. Well, I care about it, and so do you, so will your father when he hears about it. Now, come on. Where are you going, Oscar? What are you going to do? Where are we going? I don't know. Come on. Hey, you guys, wait for me. What is this, a delegation or a revolution? Tell him, Oscar. Go ahead. Mr. Barrett's okay. Well, I've got some sounding off to do. Well, I mean, somebody should. All right. Go ahead. Well, darn it, somebody should remind people that there are fellas from this town holed up in places like Vietnam, risking their necks and living like dogs to fight their battles for them. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Oscar. You sure are. are. All right, all right, it's their job, it's their duty. But what is it that they're fighting for? What is it they, that they think about in, in a swamp or a rice paddy, uh, ducking bullets and mosquitoes? Home, that's what. This town. The way things used to be. You think they want to come back and find out that behind their back somebody has junked their cannon and, and put in a... A dumb old fountain. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 Instead of our yeah. junk yeah. cannon. I'm telling you, Mr. Barrett. Hold it. You're telling the wrong fella. Well, you're a man of influence here. You run the newspaper. Save it. Come with me. Frank, if anything comes up, I'll be at the mayor's office. Yeah. What'd you say his name was? You caught it. It's Kilroy. Your idea of a joke, Barrett. I'm a busy man. His name is Kilroy, and I suggest you listen to him. <clears throat> Go ahead, Kilroy. Tell him, Oscar. Tell him about the swamps and rice paddies. And the mosquitoes. Uh, I, I got a little teed off, Mayor. Uh, I didn't mean to come here and... What Kilroy was suggesting is there are sons of this town fighting overseas. A voting age, incidentally who aren't going to be very happy when they come back and find the town cannon has been torn down and replaced by a bunch of cupids spurting water. That matter has been settled. It was passed by the town council. And we don't need any outsiders butting in telling us what to do. It shouldn't have to be an outsider. You don't know what you have here, Mayor. You don't appreciate your town. You don't know how lucky a guy is to have something like this to come back to. And how long have you lived here, may I ask? Four or five days. Uh, how long do you have to live here? Hmm. How long have you lived here, Mayor? How long have you been in office? I am proud to state that I have had the privilege of serving this community for 19 years. Well, then, as one of our uh, ancient monuments, uh, you wouldn't care to be replaced, would you? What do you mean by that? I made some notes for an editorial we're running in our next edition. Fourth of July edition. Would you like me to read them to you? Well, I'll read them anyway. I thought I'd head it. The old gray mayor. He ain't what he used to be. <laughs> I've got to give you credit because you wrote this editorial practically. It consists simply of a reprint of the deathless words spoken by Your Honor on July 4th, 1946, at the dedication of the memorial cannon. I'm not going to bore you with the entire speech. But I'd like to remind you that you closed with these ringing words. The memory of that noble sacrifice and of those who gave their lives, the finest flower of Wilson Junction, will ever live enshrined in our hearts and in this cannon. Well, that memory has just been carted off to the junkyard with your approval. It was not with my approval. It was done behind my back. Well, I, I never intended for that cannon to be junked. If it has been, it's an outrage. I thought you'd see it that way. Howdy, Mayor. Seth, the town wants that cannon back. Well, now, that cannon's worth a good $50 just to scrap. $50? Better watch yourself, Mayor. This cannon's getting more valuable every second. Well, all I can say is, if scrap metal's worth anything like that, the tax assessor's gonna have to reappraise the assessments around here. The taxes just went up. Now, hold on. Well, you think about it, but don't take too long. It's blackmail. It's statesmanship. <laughs> <laughs>
stay down there, but don't bellow me. I mean, just don't talk so loud. Ladies and gentlemen, young lady and young gentlemen, and honorable members of the city council, Reverend Dr. Hamilton. One score less two years ago, we gathered on this green to dedicate this noble cannon, to dedicate it to the proposition that those who died before had not died in vain. Today, we gather here again to renew that pledge and to rededicate this instrument of war, not only to those of the past, but to the of today, to boys of all ages, may it stand here forever as a reminder of our glorious heritage and for boys to have fun with. <laughs> Presents the one. 